if the theory was all developed and it was possible to do some calculations and know what was the right way forward and what was the wrong way forward, then I would say, okay, to go ahead and build something without doing the calculations might be reckless, which is their criticism. Essentially, you're being reckless. And the opposite of being reckless is their attempt to apply the precautionary principle. And I think that Andreessen's reaction to that is, we don't have the theory. All we have is experiments. And maybe the experiments are necessary in order to develop the theory. Therefore, you should expect some failures. You should still try to be as safe as you can, but you're going to take some risks knowing that some of these things are going to blow up. Joe, you brought up a point about, like, you know, people were attacking the AI researchers because they came out with these LLMs, but they couldn't explain how they worked. And so people were raising their hands saying, well, if we can't explain how they work, then we shouldn't be using them. You mentioned there is a, an example in history of aviation that kind of ties into the same issue. I think actually the example was from a conversation with Mark Andreessen. I'm not sure who he was in conversation with, but in any case, he pointed out that the, the basic laws underlying aviation were not really well understood. And you could build an airplane and try it and it might be stable. It might fly or it might not. It might crash immediately or it might fly a little bit, but be really hard to control. And essentially when Howard Hughes was trying to build different kinds of airplanes, it was often experimental. They would build the plane, they would try it, they'd modify it. Sometimes it would just crash outright and they would go back to the drawing board. Later on, the underlying aerodynamics and the theory about flight was developed more fully to the point where now you could probably look at the design, do some airflow analysis and so on, and know if the design is going to work properly or not, if it's going to fly, if it's going to be stable and so on. So now you have a chance to sort of know up front before you try to fly the plane, if it's going to fly properly. But back then you were in the, in the mode of like trial and error, build something, see if it works. And I would, I would probably say that right now, Elon Musk is sort of in that situation with SpaceX. You know, they, some of the problems they're trying to solve have never been dealt with before. And there really isn't a clear theory behind how to solve the problem and what kind of engineering to apply. So they end up trying several things and some of them just fail. They just spectacularly fall apart. They don't work at all. But then eventually they find a technique that does work and then they start refining it. And you could imagine someone who's following them would say, oh, that's clearly the way to go. Like the technique has already been worked out. Just follow it. And then later on, Andreessen was talking about the precautionary principle, which is sort of applied more often in, in, in Europe, but occasionally makes an appearance in the United States where you, when you're considering doing something, you're supposed to try to anticipate all the things that could go wrong. And only once you've addressed all those things that could possibly go wrong, do you go ahead with building whatever you were considering. And I think Andreessen's point would be, we don't know what might go wrong. It's too early for that. Later on, when the field is established and all the theory is worked out, maybe that will be possible. But right now, this is a field that's sort of on the edge of understanding. And all you can do really is try things and see how they work. And then, you know, don't do things that don't work and keep pursuing things that do work until you figure out the whole solution to your problem. And later on, hopefully someone will come along and systematize everything and have a complete theory. So it's no longer necessary to try to try so many experiments. But that time is not yet. Extremely well said. It seems like you have the people that I think all scientific progress is tinkering. No one went and wrote a white paper saying, okay, this is how we're going to do these discoveries. They're going to come out this cleanly in this form factor. And this is what we got to do. It's more of just people just doing thousands and thousands of experiments. You're going to say something. I mean, it's not always the case that engineering follows scientific theory. It's more often that you try a lot of things, engineering, and then the scientific theory is developed as a result. Exactly. I think it was the old, there was, is the, is the Persian Empire or something, it was like the Harambi, Harabi codes or something. And they talked about, they have codes on the law was regarding house construction. And if you're an engineer back there building a house, if that structure collapsed, they would either, you would die or they take one of your child or something. And people say like, you know, that's very barbaric and blah, blah. And yes, my understanding is barbaric. But what they're really getting at to is if you are going to put someone else's family into this structure, you make sure this thing is 
built to the level that it, your own family would depend upon it. And this thing is reliable because we don't have engineering. We don't have physics. We don't know material strength or whatnot. All we depend upon is your experience in building these buildings. So I we find want, that- We want to know that you have skin in the game. Exactly. You know, that, that's so well said. I look at these people who are tinkering and pushing science forward or pushing aviation forward, or pushing space flight forward. They're the ones building the path. And of course, the path's going to have twists and turns and the path is not going to be evenly graded or somewhere, but it's a path from our current wilderness that we're in into a brighter future. And then later on, what you do is you have the business historians come in or you get the researchers come in and then they do the nice paving of the road, they're leveling it off. And some people think that the paving of the road and leveling it off was the most important aspect, but they're like, no, it was the person who built the path in the first place to tell us like where to go. Right. And it, if the theory was all developed and it was possible to do some calculations and know what was the right way forward and what was the wrong way forward, then I would say, okay, to go ahead and build something without doing the calculations might be reckless, which is their criticism. Essentially, you're being reckless. And the opposite of being reckless is their attempt to apply the precautionary principle. And I think that Andreessen's reaction to that is we don't have the theory. All we have is experiments. And maybe the experiments are necessary in order to develop the theory. Therefore, you should expect some failures. You should still try to be as safe as you can, but you're going to take some risks knowing that some of these things are going to blow up. So true. And that's why entrepreneurship is not for the faint-hearted. And there's so many entrepreneurs who fail and crap out, and there's very few who make it. Thank God they make it. And that's why you see these large companies not tinkering with these ideas because they just can't have a PR disaster. They can't have something fail. They have to look good. What if it's what the, the government is against what they're doing? What if their customers don't like it? So thank God we have people who are willing to take these risks at some level just to advance what we're doing. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Well, for you guys who are watching, love to hear what you think about this. Put in the comment section below and don't forget to like, subscribe, sub, share, Patreon, whatever you can do. Tattoo Joe and I's face on your back or something cool. Best one will be on camera. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Peace.